I got a package. So yeah, I was actually pretty surprised too uh, when I got home and this was uh, here today because I've ordered it a week ago, which surprised the crap out of me. Um, so kudos to uh, Timu. Uh, I've, I've ordered some stuff off Wish before and it's taken like months. So considering this thing only took like, like I said, a week, um, I'm actually really happy and surprised. So I'm gonna open this thing up real quick and make sure all three packages are in here because one of these, uh, something here, is being reviewed in this video. Oh yeah, new microphone, which I think I just did this because it was only a couple bucks and um, you know, I'll try it out. We have a, this is supposedly a 12 pack of one foot by one foot um, uh, sound panels. I am dubious about that because of how small this package is. And the star of the show that's being reviewed today is, so let's just uh, tackle this. So yes, I have here the main reason why I even uh, ordered all this stuff from Wish anyway, was because this was one of the main things. Um, I want to get, I want to get my hands on this, one of these for a while. This is one of those new, uh, uh, retro emulation station uh, handheld game things that have been just been blowing up everywhere. Um, I've seen them all over eBay and Amazon, uh, Wish, Timu, um, AliExpress. Um, I think Alibaba. I think is another site. But yeah, uh, this is just one of those clone uh, cheap uh, emulation things that just you know, they're kind of marketed towards uh, us retro guys uh, because of their appearance. So. Um, I kind of seen some videos pop up on my feed with this and I've been ignoring them because I've been really wanting to get one of these to review. So I'm going to review it. So let's open the box and see what's in it. All right. So let's grab my pocket knife and let's just open up and see what it, what it is. Now I really am not too sure what I'm going to expect, um, in here. Except something extremely cheap, because I've seen these things all over the place for like uh, fifteen to twenty bucks, actually. So before I open, I want to take a look at the packaging. God, it's just really generic. Like, okay, for the impression that I get with this, this is almost something like, um, like when you see a lot of these uh, copycat consoles, like the NES Mini and the Super Nintendo Minis and the Genesis Minis and all the clone Chinese clone ones. Uh, the packages really try to like copy the main ones like they try to copy nintendo so that it's like oh it could just be a revision of nintendo's but because nintendo doesn't really sell one of these in fact there's no official one of these i don't think except for the um the super boy from hyperkin uh but that actually uses super nintendo cartridges um this just kind of has more of a generic boxy look like it kind of looks like a like a review sample box or a box where uh you know, the, the final artwork's not decided yet, so they're just throwing some stuff on here for, uh, like, review purposes. Or even, like, you're not going to see the box. You're just going to see what's in the box on a display, and you buy it because of the display and the box is really playing. So it's right on point. Direction key. Handheld game station. So specifically, this is the, um, I didn't mention this before. This is the SF2000. These have also gone by the name of Datafrog SF2000, and I don't know why. But, uh, ooh, 2.4 Wireless game controller not included. Dang it. Uh, 3D directional rocker, TV output, handle connection. 6,000 plus games. Really? Awesome. Just generic game console. So this is in the box. Ooh. Okay. So, we have the console itself, which has surprising heft to it, with the cheapest freaking outer bag I've ever felt. We have a charging cable. That's USB-C, really? Huh, I was expecting like USB micro, because a lot of these cheap consoles are still using like way outdated tech, but I guess, you know, they gotta be a little bit up to date, I suppose. Well, that's not too terribly short. We have the AV out, which is 
God, this is the cheapest feeling uh, AV cable. It's got some pretty good length to it, it looks like, but like, oh, that's just the smallest. That's not even three and a half millimeter. That's like, what was it like 2.5 or 2.1, whatever that is. And mono audio out. That might be a bit of a problem. Um, I might have to hook this up to my TV here in a bit and see how it works. I'm also going to plug this into my direct capture and see how that looks. All right, and what else in the box? <laughs> um, I, I can't read. <sighs> I just made a joke that I can't read. Wow, I'm stupid. Okay, so, give me the English side. And bad translations all around. Pilot lamp, directional key, 3D rocker bar, start select, function keys. Suna. I was just kidding. Sauna. Um, cell, memory card, circuit charging, charging a port, modulation, video output ports. Uh, we got main interface, game list. So this thing apparently supports both uh, PAL and NTS. Well, it says NTSX, but it's NTSC. Um, but it supports GBA, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Super Famicom, and NES. Can be used with the optional SF900 wireless controller when playing two-player. So it has a 3-inch IPS HD screen. Really? They're claiming that to be HD, which means that screen should be... What's HD resolution? 720? Stereo speaker. Uh, one gigabyte of RAM. That's like more RAM than the NES Famicom. That's like that's like more RAM than all the consoles and supports combined. Uh, 1.5 watt max power dissipation with a 5 to 6 hour battery life and a 4 hour charge time. Um, video output for AV, okay, 2.5 milliliter, or mil millimeter, cool. Um, simulations can sustain Famicom, Super Famicom, MD, is that Mega Drive? So Genesis, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and MAME titles. So this thing can support MAME? Really? Okay. Uh, okay, machine, is re machine picture for reference in case the machine is based on the physical object. There are instructions for use only approved reference. <laughs> the upgrade of the machine software is based on physical object. What is this translation? Oh my god. If there's any change in the content or parameters off of the prompt, oh, okay, charging method. Please use a 5 volt, uh, 1000 milliamp charger. Okay. Do not disassemble or change components in any way. All right. Okay, sorry for the sudden uh, camera shift. Um, right when I picked this up, my phone started buzzing that my battery was low, so I had to switch out uh, cameras. But anyway, yes, let's take a look at this thing. Yeah, I already had the bag off, I just put it back on for this shot. Makes it feel stupid, but anyway, yes. This uh, is actually a pretty nice looking uh, little unit here. Like, it's definitely designed after the original NES Super Nintendo controller. In fact, I have, um, while I was switching out phones, I grabbed one, and you can see it's very, very similar. Like, it's obviously designed off it to, you know, appeal to us retro guys. In fact, it's actually just a little bit bigger than an actual Super Nintendo controller, which I actually enjoy. Um, the plastic doesn't feel, it doesn't feel too bad. In fact, it kind of feels, well, obviously there's like a 30-year difference in plastics here, but uh, obviously it's a little bit lighter shade of gray, but that could also be that this controller is old, but... Yeah, the plastics don't feel too too terrible. In fact, uh, quality-wise, ooh, that's rigid. Quality-wise, the plastic feels like um, like you uh, when you buy like uh, those really cheap third-party controllers, uh, like the N64 or the Nintendo, like the super super cheap ones on eBay. They're like five bucks. Not that, but when you buy like the fifteen twenty dollar uh, aftermarket controllers. Um, I can't think of any name brands that I've seen on eBay, but like the high, the higher dollar um, third party ones. That's what the plastic feels like. It feels like good plastic, which is surprising. I only paid like 15 bucks for this. Buttons aren't, ooh. 
the main face buttons aren't too bad. The directional pad's not too bad. Like, it's a little clicky, but it's not terrible. Ooh, those are definitely clicky. Especially compared to, like, the original controller. Like, it's definitely... This is definitely mushier. But, you know, that could just be because this is all using all new parts and plastics. Um, starting to select feel good. In fact, what I find really surprising is these buttons here are actually... The X and A are concave, which means they kind of dip in like a little bowl. And Y and B are kind of concave, or convex, so they kind of have a little, um, like, a hill, hill feel. And they're actually not... They're not super small. In fact, I don't think they're much smaller than the... Yeah, they're actually about the same size as the authentic buttons. But I will I will say that the uh, they do have the convex and concave wrong. Um, and that's not a gripe. That's just... I'm just noticing it. The uh, X and Y on the OG controller are concave, and the A and B are convex. So they kind of have... They have uh, these... They have these two swapped. But that's not a deal breaker, actually, because it actually doesn't feel too bad. Like, I can roll my thumb between them. And, you know, that actually, I was actually kind of curious about this little the 3D rocker here. It's not in an inconvenient spot. Like, I could easily switch between them if I needed to. Um, so, yeah, that's not too terrible. Um, it said stereo sound in the pamphlet. But, as you can see, only one of these speakers is actually drilled out. The other one isn't, so it's mono sounds. I don't know why they said uh, stereo. By the way, yeah, that's not a bad feeling little unit. I mean, especially with this little ridge here for the battery, that kind of like it's not bad. That's not a bad feel to it, actually. I, I enjoy that. Let's see what do we have over here. We have the on-off switch, USB-C charging, the well, it's it's S, it's micro SD, but they call it TF card. The video out and the volume slider. So overall first impressions of the way it looks, it's not terrible. It's not bad. And the thing is, so I want to mention this, I don't have like huge like bear paw hands here, but I also don't have little tiny petite hands. Um, this is kind of why I prefer the the GBA um, horizontal layout, because even though I do, I don't have huge hands, but I do have big hands. So I actually was never, you know, I, 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 I'm really not a super fan of like the vertical, like, I, I know, blasphemy here, but like the Game Boy layout of the original Game Boy, that's vertical. Because my hands are almost too cramped together for me to play some games, which yeah, it's just not a deal breaker on those handheld consoles. That's why I prefer the GBA over the, um, the Game Boy Advance SP. But this actually feels really, really nice. Uh, I'm assuming I might have to charge the battery first because I don't know how old this is. Hey, we have a splash screen. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to get direct capture. But that screen is actually... It doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah, I, I'll get some direct capture, and uh, I'm gonna go plug this into my TV real quick too. But we have MAME with 204 available games. We have user settings, uh, ROM list, favorites, history, search. Oops. That's actually responsive. Okay, we have a uh, family computer or NES with 868 games. I want to say that's too many NES games because I think I remember right the uh, actual NES game list is like eight. 20 something? I'll have to look. Super Famicom, we have 1167 games. That sounds way too high. I think I think there's a lot of, okay, that says 6,000 games, but so far we're not at 6,000. We're at maybe 2,000? Yeah, 204, 867, 1167. So far, so far we're at 2,000 games. Mega Drive over the Genesis, we got with 912 games, so roughly just under 3,000. Um, original Game Boy with 1142. Okay, so yeah, we're getting closer, never mind. Game Boy Color, uh, Game Boy Advance, and we go back to MAME. So, and the sound's not too terrible. So, um, well, I'm just gonna pick a game. Uh, okay, we have, I'm not gonna go through all the games here, but I know full well there's probably gonna be a lot of, like, throwaway games. And I got three, three quarter battery life. Interesting. We have, uh, Contra 137. Contra Force 4, Adventure Island 1 through 3, and 4, Double Dragon 1 through 4, Hot Blood. Let's find Super Mario. I want to see how well that sounds on here. Mylon's Secret Castle. God, this is like a portable way of irritating the nerd. Super Mario. You know what? That's not bad. 
It's a, ooh, it's a little grindy, but this is actually really playable. And I'm not hearing like that the, that the music's quitting with sounds being played. So yeah, I'm gonna go plug this into my big TV and uh, see how they look on there. So um, long this stuff hooked up, I just want to say this real quick. Uh, this cable they sent is stupidly freaking long. This is like eight foot long, which is perfect to hook up to a TV and sit down in the game room. This is, more and more about this is actually pretty impressive. Okay, so I've got it all hooked up. Oop. And it's not, I mean, there's the screen, it's plugged in. So I don't know what's exactly um, going on, but it, oh, what do I do? Oh, it's delayed. It takes a little bit. Okay, and sorry for the scroll pattern. It's gonna happen. Okay, yeah, there's there's some of the junk games, Angry Birds. Um, what do I, what's a game that I know that I've played? Let's try Mario. Yeah, the screen's a little, it, it's a little, for some reason, it's trying to stretch but not be stretched. So I think it's expecting this to be plugged into a flat screen, like a wide screen, but um, that's why it's, it's being cut off over here and over here. Jackie Chan. Knight Rider. Um, Poyo Poyo, really? Poyo Poyo? Cool. Uh, actually, that's, I wanna hear something. Metal Gear, Metro Cross. Oh, Metroid's not on here? Oh, I'm mad. That doesn't look too terrible. Like it looks really good. It look, it's not perfect. Like I can definitely see some artifacting and some pixel problems, but this is completely playable. Come on. Yeah, there's some pixel problems with this on the big screen. I don't know if that's from like the video chip, well, emulation, whatever's going on, but it doesn't look terrible. Okay, so Nintendo seems to work okay. Obviously it's not pixel perfect. It's got some issues, but hey, not too terrible. Let's try uh, Super Famicom. Oh, something else I want to mention real quick that I just I just remembered and realized. This is supposed to be, um, it's got a lot of clone stuff on it, right? It's modeled after the American Super Nintendo, but it's got the Super Famicom uh, logo that has the rainbow buttons. I find that kind of interesting. I, I would love to have this have the rainbow style buttons on it, but you know, just something I noticed. Anyway, Doom. Oh, that's gotta be awesome. Let's try Donkey Kong Country. I want to see if this thing can be powerful enough to run it because that's that's something I'm kind of curious about. That is slow. Like, oh my god, why is that so slow? And it doesn't look all that great either. Okay, it's not Donkey Kong, City Kong's Quest. Well, we're gonna quit that. Why was that so slow though? Okay, well let's try a different thing then. Let's try the Mega Drive. And I know at least one of these games. We're gonna try Sonic. Just right off the bat. I want to try Sonic. Oh, that's not too bad. That doesn't sound bad either. I suck at Sonic, so it's going to be awesome. That's not too bad. I mean, yeah, it's getting cut off down here and stuff, but okay, so Mega Drive or Genesis works just fine. Let's try Game Boy. I'm kind of curious by this. Oh, that looks so weird. Oh, that's cool. Like, that looks really weird. Like, it's just a black and white Tetris, but it's... Huh. Oh, it's cut off the bottom part of the screen. That's not gonna be good. Cool, Game Boy Color. Okay, like graphically, it doesn't look all that great. It's looking better than looking through my camera than it is on this. It almost seems like it's running a little fast. Hmm. 
Okay, so Game Boy Color seems like it's running fast. What about GBA? Pokemon Emerald, Ruby, Sapphire, Mystery Dungeon, Fire Emblem. Holy crap, there's like eight great games right there. GTA Advance. That can't be Grand Theft Auto Advance. It's got to be Gran Turismo Advance, right? Which I, I did have this at one point. So I, I, I do, I am a little familiar with this game. Oh, it's in... Yeah, this is Gran Turismo. This is so weird playing Game Boy Advance games on the... I couldn't read anything. It's changed. Oh, yeah. This runs just about as well as I remember. Except it's on the big screen. Okay, let's try MAME titles. I am curious by this. King of Fighters. But like most of the games that would be on here would be Neo Geo Cup, Neo Drift Out. Like how well is this gonna run these MAME titles? Because if I remember correctly, you need some pretty good pretty good stuff to run MAME. Like in terms of like, if you make like a laptop or a little desktop into this. Metal Slug? Oh, I gotta try Metal Slug. I've, I've at least heard of Metal Slug. Oh, that's different. It's loading some sort of bin file. That's 8,000, so 8 megabyte. How big is that CF card, or SD card? Oh, wow. That actually looks like an arcade title, or an arcade screen. Oh, cool. Oh, I didn't. Cool. So I, I don't know much about MAME. If that was running well, tell me. If not, then crap. Okay, I am curious by the Super Famicom thing. Oh, yeah, that's Super, oh, Super Famicom. Like, I am so confused by this. Like, why was this game running so poorly? It was slow as crap. Wait, what? That's normal speed now. Oh, but what? But now it's running normal speed. Okay, we'll just see how it runs. Because I vaguely know how this runs. So graphically it's not too great. But it is... It sucks things are being... It sucks things are being like cut off. But it's not too bad. Okay, there's a little bit of a slowdown there. A lot of movement and stuff on screen. Yeah, it's seeming to struggle a little bit, but you know what? Not too bad. Hi everyone. So it's been a few days since I started the review of this little thing, and I found a few quirks and problems with it. So let's talk about those before I give my full review. You might have just got done watching me play this thing on the big screen television. That was actually about two or three days ago. You may also notice I don't have any direct capture to compare that to, and that's because of one of the problems. When I plugged it into the CRT, it took about five or 10 seconds for it to switch over from the internal screen to the CRT. I don't know if it was a problem with this, the AV cable, my USB cable for my capture card, my capture card itself, or OBS. It kept trying to switch back and forth like every 10 seconds. I could never get a consistent amount of time for recording, which is why I couldn't record anything. Now again, that might be just be on something on my end, so I'm not, I'm not gonna fault this one too much for that, but I am gonna fault it for the output to the CRT. If you noticed in the menu, the top sides and bottom were being cut off significantly, which wouldn't be that big a deal, but considering it also transferred over into the games, that's a problem. Especially since a lot of player information is in those areas that it was being cut off. It kind of gives this thing a huge negative because that means that if you played on the big screen, like with any RPGs or racing games or fighting games where you need to know that information and you can't see it, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble and have problems playing the game which is kind of a bummer because since this thing is marketed to us retro guys you would think they would have that have tested that now yes to be fair they were probably expecting it to be plugged into a modern television that's 16 by 9 and have it look correctly there 
granted, fine. Most people, most if not everybody, has a flat screen television in their house nowadays. But it's still kind of a weird thing that you know they were marketed to us retro guys. So you'd think that they would know that hey, most retro gamers are gonna have a CRT of some kind in their house or game room, and they would want this to look correct on that TV. Should they want to plug it in and play a quick thing of Nintendo, you know, Super Mario or F Zero or Zelda or Metroid or uh, Sonic or whatever the case may be and have it look correct and the fact that it can't even manage that is kind of a problem I mean yeah like I said it could just be they didn't intend for them to plug it into a CRT 4x3 but at the same time they had to expect it that hey we're marketing this to retro gamers who have a fond fond strong memory and feeling of those things and they want them to be correct now I will admit on the little screen they do look okay and they do play they do it does look okay on on here and it's not cut off here. So I think it's just something between the, con the conversion from this to the 4x3. And yes, I do want to clarify real quick. Yes, that Sony Trinitron does have a 16x9 mode for later game consoles like the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox, and DVD players. But I didn't want to use that because I didn't want to give a false impression of this little machine. Because not every CRT is going to have a 16x9 mode. Another negative that I noticed was this thing just struggled playing Super Nintendo titles which I found surprising. It could play main titles seemingly just fine, like Metal Slug 3. Uh, I'm not a, I, I have never really played MAME or arcade titles too much, so I don't know if that played it correctly. It looked like it did, but I'll have to, you guys will have to tell me it in the comments. But yeah, it seemed to play NES, Genesis, and the Game Boy lines just fine, you know, with some minor graphical problems here and there. But Super Nintendo struggled. It was like playing at quarter speed, the sound was off, the pitch was off, it was just super slow and sluggish, and I had no idea why. Until this morning, actually, um, while I was waiting for my kid to wake up, I decided that I was going to at least break my rule and look at a couple reviews, because it was bugging me, and I wanted to know if this was a common thing or if this was just something that was affecting my little machine here for whatever reason. And turns out that's actually a common fault with these uh, SF2000s is their playback of Super Nintendo titles is rough. So basically, in one of the reviews I read, and I'm gonna say it real quick right here, the fix is, the quick fix anyway, is to start the game, let it, let it get past the loading, let it start, select and start to go back to the main menu and quit the game, and then immediately go back into it. And it plays it just fine. And that's why Diddy Kong's Quest started playing just fine when I played it the second time. That's exact, That's essentially what I did. Was I backed out and I decided, well, I want to see what's going on and get another and get another shot of it. Now, mainly that was just because I wanted to get another shot of it playing because I was like, well, why is it not playing weird? Look at this. Look at it not play right. And it played fine. And every Super Nintendo game did that. It started playing like crap, started playing slow too slow until I backed out and went back into it. Why? I don't know firmware problem, emulator problem, problem with the Super Nintendo ROMs, maybe some sort of security thing. I don't know. Uh, I'm not the, the technical guru, gurus, guru here to uh, uh, even get my opinion on that. But considering that this is marketed to play Super Nintendo Famicom and Super Nintendo titles and it struggles to do that, it's kind of a, it's kind of a bummer. But at the same time, considering that's the only emulator it's struggling with and it can play MAME and the other things just fine and it's a little quirk that you can kind of work around it's a fault but not a I'm not buying it because of that reason other than that this thing did live up to nearly every, every expectation I had it played all the games just fine minus Metroid because Metroid's not on the, Super, the Nintendo list which bugs the crap out of me because how how can you miss out on one of the better Nintendo titles but you put Angry Birds yeah yeah you have Angry Birds and yes it's loaded with just crap games Obviously, it has over 6,000 titles, and a lot of them, I'm sure, are either ROM hacks or unlicensed, unauthentic games. And I haven't tried to pull the games off and put new games on here yet. That's just something I haven't done yet. Um, I plan to in the future. But yeah, other than that, this is a very nice little machine. It lived up to most of my expectations. I can work around the Super Nintendo quirk. The battery life was actually reasonably well. Um, I got about three hours out of it without charging it. Uh, pulled it out of the box. Um, your mileage may vary. Uh, I charged, it took about a little over four hours to go to full charge. And then I got another, I think, five, five and a half hours out of it, uh, playing it again. And of course, it, it's, it's battery life is four to six hours, so it could change between battery to battery, uh, game to game, whatever the case may be. So yeah, 
let's just say four to six hours, that's a road trip. So yeah, when I go on my business trip next spring, this is gonna be a lifesaver. I gonna be able to play all my favorite games and not have to worry about, you know, packing my DS or my Game Boy Advance and all my cartridges. I can just take my little $20 gizmo here and if it breaks, gets lost or stolen, I don't have any personal information on here, so I'm not gonna be out a too, you know, too much, you know, money here. And that's the other thing, only 20 bucks or less, depends on where you get it. Considering that it's, you know, got an IPS screen, the buttons feel good, it feels good in the hand, it, may, it seems to be made out of a good quality plastic, it comes with a rechargeable battery, it's, it's a good little console. You know, it's not perfect by any means, it has its faults, yes, but it's lived up to all my expectations. It's, it was marketed to a retro guy like me. It's got games on here that I know I'll enjoy. I can put other games on here once I figure out how and I get ballsy enough. And the reason for that is because um, of a malware problem. Now, I'm not saying this has malware. I don't know if it does or not. I'm not saying that this, this run has any malware, but considering that there has been some reports of some other cheap handheld consoles, especially like the Android boxes coming loaded with malware, you know, I'm, I don't want to plug this into a dedicated machine. I want to plug into a sacrificial machine to, you know, put games on it. Would I recommend this little thing? Absolutely. Asterisk. I can't recommend it or endorse it too much because it does have that gray area legality with all the ROMs that are on it. And a certain game company might get very upset at it. But at the same time, honestly, they don't make nothing like this. They don't sell nothing like this. So somebody else has got to pick up the slack and that's exactly what's going on. Yes, it's not official, but... It does work phenomenally well for what it is. The buttons feel good. Like I said, the buttons feel good. The plastic feels good. The screen looks good. The output's a negative. Sure. The Super Famicom's, whatever. But yeah, would I recommend this? Absolutely. So if you've got a spare 20 bucks or something, you want to try one out, hit up AliExpress, hit up eBay, hit up Wish, hit up Timu. They're, they're neat little consoles. And again, your mileage may vary with these. Um, there's a one model that's a little more expensive that comes with the second controller. Uh, I think that was like 30 bucks. But yeah, that's my review of this thing. Definitely worth it. I would recommend picking one of these up if you get the chance to, because, you know, even if you don't pull any games off here and you want to play it just as it is, like I have been, there's a lot of fun games on here. So yeah. So yeah, with that being said, thank you everyone for watching this review video of the Data Frog or whatever it's called, SF2000. A really nice little handheld unit. Um, put your thoughts down below in the comments if you have one of these or if you have any thoughts on it, like involving like firmware updates, if the SD card's safe to put into a main machine, um, if you know what games are just absolutely f junk games to pull off and get rid of them and put on real games, um, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. Hear your thoughts and um, questions about it. And I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the notification bell to be, upload, to be notified when I upload more content because for some reason the algorithm's kind of weird with that sometimes. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.